In the beginning, there was only chaos, the gaping emptiness of void. Then, with the passage of time, Starry Aranos and Gaia, heaven and earth, emerged from chaos. Gaia was the everlasting foundation of the gods of Olympus. She was followed by Tartarus, the great region beneath the earth, Eros, the shining god of love and attraction and desire, and Erebus, the unknowable darkness where death dwells. From there, Gaia married Aranos, the starry sky, her equal, to cover her, the hills and the fruit-swelling oceans. Gaia then bore Orea, the mountains, and Pontus, the sea, without sweet union of love. Then she lay with Aranos and bore deep-swirling Oceanus, Coeus, and Creus, Hyperion, Iapetus, Thea, Rhea, Themis, and gold-crowned Phoebe, and lovely Tethys. After them was born Kronos, the willy, the youngest, and most terrible of her children. Only Kronos, the youngest of the Titans, was brave enough to take his mother's sickle and castrate his father. Kronos then became the king of the gods with his sister Rhea as his queen. Kronos, however, learned of a prophecy that he would be overthrown by one of his children. To prevent this, each time Rhea gave birth, Kronos swallowed the child. Rhea tricked Kronos when her sixth child Zeus was born. She wrapped in a stone swaddling clothes, which Kronos swallowed, thinking it was a baby. Zeus was then taken to Crete to be raised in secret. When Zeus grew up, he returned and forced Kronos to disgorge his siblings. He led them in war against Kronos and the Titans, and eventually they won, and Zeus became the king of the gods. And thus, the reign of the Olympians began, marking a new era in the history of the cosmos. Welcome back, fellow myth seekers and lovers of ancient wisdom. Today we embark on a captivating journey through the realms of God's creation and the epic clash of cosmic pantheons. Get ready to unlock the divine secrets as we delve into this mesmerizing world of Hesiod's Theogony and its enchanting connections to ancient Near Eastern theogonies and even the Old Testament book of Genesis. Hesiod's Theogony might be your go-to source for Greek mythology, but what if I told you that the deities of ancient Greece didn't work in isolation? But what if I told you that Genesis borrows its story from previous Genesis stories? Ever wondered how Greek gods like Zeus and Poseidon might rub elbows with the likes of Marduk and Tiamat? We'll be exploring the intriguing parallels between Babylonian and Hittite creation myths, Genesis, and Hesiod's Theogony. We'll also uncover the lingering influence of these ancient tales on later mythologies and religious beliefs. Hesiod's account of the Greek creation story, as detailed in his work Theogony, begins with the emergence of chaos, void, or chasm. And from chaos, Gaia, Tartarus, and Eros came into existence, that is, Earth, Underworld, and Desire. Depending on which version we're looking at, either Gaia emerges with Aranos, or she gives birth to Aranos, who either way becomes her husband and the father of her children, the Titans. Kronos, the youngest of all, overthrows Aranos, castrates him, and then in turn is overthrown by his son Zeus. And this is how we get the succession of the gods, which is called Theogony. Theogony, from the Greek Theogonia, 
meaning Generations of the Gods, is an epic poem of 1,022 hexameter lines which describe the birth of the gods in the Greek pantheon. It is thought to have been composed 700 BCE, or somewhere around the 8th century BCE. Little is known of Hesiod's life. His father emigrated from Chimae in Asia Minor and settled in Boeotia, a small state in central Greece. It is assumed that the poet was a farmer, a fact garnered from the earlier verses of the Theogony. He may have also been a rhapsodist, a reciter of poetry, where he learned the technique and vocabulary of heroic songs. Although there are some who question whether or not Hesiod actually wrote the Theogony, most classicists believe he did. However, parts of the work may have been added by a later poet and there is a definite similarity in some aspects to some Mesopotamian literature. The Enuma Elish, also known as the Seven Tablets of Creation, is the Babylonian creation myth, whose title is derived from the opening lines of the piece, When on High. Enuma Elish. The myth tells the story of the great god Marduk's victory over the forces of chaos and his establishment of order at the creation of the world. All of the tablets containing the myth found at Ashur, Kish, Ashurbanipal's library at Nineveh, and other excavated sites date to 1200 BCE. Their colophons, however, indicate that these are all copies of a much older version of the myth dating from long before the reign of Hammurabi of Babylon, 18th century BCE, the king who elevated the god Marduk to patron deity of Babylon. The poem in its present form, with Marduk as champion, is thought to be a revision of an even older Sumerian work, and the Sumerian Ea or Enki or Enlil is thought to have played the major role in the original version of the story dated to 3500 BCE. Theogony of Dunu, composition that dates to the second millennium BCE, when Dunu was a town of importance. The text is useful for showing that each city may have had its own local traditions about creation, which differed even in essentials from those of other cities. Unlike the Epic of Creation or Enuma Elish, in which the primeval forces were seawater and freshwater, we have plow and earth as the originators of creation and the parents of the sea Anu the sky, who creates the sky, which creates the earth. Thus, we cannot speak of Mesopotamian view of creation as a single specific tradition. This in turn shows the futility of claiming a direct connection between Genesis, as described in the Old Testament, and any one of the Mesopotamian account of creations. In fact, it mostly draws upon all of these theogonies that come before it. Hesiod's Theogony and the Enuma Elish are both ancient epic poems that explore the creation of the universe and the origins of the gods in different mythological traditions. While they come from different cultures and time periods, there are several similarities between the two works. Both Theogony and the Enuma Elish describe the process of creation and the establishment of order in the cosmos. They present elaborate cosmogenies that explain how the world came into existence and how the gods emerged. Both poems feature primordial deities who precede the main pantheon of gods. These primordial beings represent abstract concepts and forces of nature. In Theogony, chaos or void is the initial entity from which everything else originates, while in the Enuma Elish, Tiamat, or the deep primeval sea, beginning of all. Both of these works provide genealogies of the gods, tracing their lineage and relationships. They present a hierarchy of gods and goddesses with different generations of deities and their interactions shaping the world in its divine order. Both poems depict conflicts among the gods that lead to the establishment of order. In Theogony, 
the Titans rebel against Aranos, and then later Olympian gods overthrow the Titans. In the Enuma Elish, the younger gods, led by Marduk, battle against the primordial goddess Tiamat and her forces. Both poems address the succession of power among the gods. They portray a shift in leadership and authority from older generations to younger ones. In Theogony, Zeus emerges as the supreme ruler of the gods, while in Enuma Elish, it's Marduk. Both works employ common mythological motifs found in various cultures, such as the slaying of a monstrous deity for the creation of the world. These motifs reflect archetypal themes and symbolize the triumph of order over chaos.